linear periodization, reverse linear periodization, undulating periodization. There are many others yet, but which is best for strength? Welcome back, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here, local periodization enjoyer. And today we're talking about periodization and which periodization style is best for strength. Periodization usually aims to improve your gains by doing two things. One, taking advantage of the effect of variation over time on gains. And number two is to manage stress from training a little bit better. Let's first look at the evidence on periodization and whether or not it even plays a role for improving your strength gains. There was a meta-analysis performed by Moose Garden colleagues a few years ago that included 35 studies looking at the effects of different periodization styles on strength gains. In these 35 studies, they compared not periodizing to periodizing. And sometimes they compared different periodization styles, like for example, linear periodization to reverse linear periodization or reverse linear periodization to undulating periodization. Before we go any further, let me explain what each of these three terms mean. First, linear periodization. In linear periodization, you gradually increase the weight as the microcycle goes on, and you decrease the number of reps per set. In reverse linear periodization, the reverse happens. So you increase the number of reps over the course of the macrocycle while decreasing the amount of weight on the bar. Finally, undulating periodization is kind of a catch-all phrase for any style of periodization that involves manipulation of variables such as intensity or weight, reps, sets, RPE, exercise selection over time. It's not a very specific type, but it just refers to undulating periodization wherein on Monday you might hit a certain session, Tuesday a different session, Wednesday a different session, and perhaps every week, in the case of weekly undulating periodization, you would hit the same sessions again, but there's always some undulation going on in some sort of variable. Before we go into the results of this meta-analysis by Moose Garden colleagues, let me point one thing out. In the periodization groups, generally, the training was more specific to the outcome or to the strength test right before the test. So for example, in the non-periodization group, they simply performed the same training all throughout, which means even in the week or two before they tested the Leonard Max, for example, they were still doing, for example, sets of five the whole way through. Whereas in the periodization groups, oftentimes what happened is that right before the strength test, they kind of did what powerlifters would do, and that's to increase training specificity. You know, train heavier, lower rep sets, anything that resembles the outcome or the strength test more closely. And so, because of this reason, regardless of the results, there was generally a slight bias in favor of the periodization groups. What did they find? Well, they found that periodizing training led to greater one rep max strength gains compared to not periodizing training. The difference was relatively small, but there was a difference in the strength gains seen. Additionally, participants saw greater gains in their one rep max strength when they used undulating periodization as opposed to linear periodization. So from the results, it seems that periodizing your training does indeed appear to lead to more one rep max strength gains, aka make you stronger, and that undulating periodization may be better for strength gains than linear periodization. To briefly touch on muscle growth, there were no differences in muscle growth whether you periodize your training or not. Therefore, for muscle growth, the effect of periodization probably isn't something to consider too closely. Personally, I still think you should periodize your training somewhat, but it's not as clear cut as with any sort of performance outcome where you do want to use periodization generally as a vehicle for specificity. As you get closer and closer to competition or to a max out, periodization should generally aim to increase specificity and that's the main effect of periodization in my view. So it seems like there's no effect of periodization on muscle growth, but there is an effect on strength. Why is this? This is where a preprint entitled The Myth of Periodization by Steele and colleagues comes in. What they argue in this very recent preprint is that periodization is more so based on myths than it is on actual empirical evidence. They go further and explain that they think that most of the benefit of periodization in the research stems from increasing specificity right before a test of strength. And that in reality, there may be little to no effect of periodization on strength improvements. In other words, by simply having participants train harder and heavier, closer to a max out, the periodization groups may generally just see better gains, not so much as a result of periodization itself, but more so of just increasing specificity as they got closer and closer to their strength testing. Indeed, we do know that heavier training leads to better one rep max strength gains, all else being equal. So those are the two claims put forward by stealing colleagues. I do think there is a lot of truth to this. In reality, within a properly constructed microcycle, which you could absolutely argue 
is a form of undulating or daily undulating periodization, wherein each day of the week of training looks a bit different, you can absolutely recover just fine and manage stress pretty well. And in fact, if the effect of variation itself, like changing exercises week to week on strength gains or on hypertrophy is surprisingly contentious, there's not necessarily a huge benefit to constant variation in training stimuli. You don't need to change exercises or rep ranges or anything like that as frequently as some people assume you do. For example, if you look at a lot of West Side programming, which has its benefits, you know, but equally the degree of variation, the amount of times exercises are changed, loading ranges are changed, etc., that is likely detrimenting the strength gains of the people using West Side training. So generally, Undulating periodization is better than linear periodization, but I do think the main thing is training specificity for strength. Importantly, periodization styles don't have to fall squarely into one or the other. Linear versus reverse linear. Daily undulating versus linear. In reality, the best programs, the best planned out and thought out programs, will often have elements of both linear, for example, and daily undulating periodization. So you'll have some elements of undulating periodization insofar as each training will look a bit different in terms of the exact amount of weight being used, the exact amount of reps being used, with the order of the exercises and all that sort of stuff. But oftentimes, really good powerlifting and strength programs will almost necessarily have a linear component, wherein the closer you get to a competition or to a max out, the heavier your training should be and, so, and the more your reps should decrease. And that's an element of linear periodization, as we discussed earlier, you know, reps go down, weight goes up as you get closer to a competition. And so besides some variation across the week for training monotony, you know, just not having every session look the same and having training generally get heavier or more specific as you get closer to competition, that incorporates several different periodization styles at once. And that's likely your best bet for strength gains. So we've discussed the evidence. We've discussed some of the limitations of viewing linear periodization versus undulating periodization and all that stuff. But let me give you some recommendations practically that you can take away from this video and apply to your own training for strength. First off, periodization is mainly a vehicle for training specificity, breaking the monotony of training and maximizing progress as a result. Secondly, periodization plays a relatively small role for strength, all else being equal. And for muscle growth, it plays little to no role. For strength athletes or anyone wanting to get stronger in the off season, AKA further away from a competition or from a max out, Consider being a bit less specific, you know, using somewhat higher reps and somewhat lower weights and focusing a bit more on muscle growth. Finally, I think for the best strength programs, incorporating some elements of daily undulating periodization, wherein not every day across the week looks the same in terms of the order of exercises, in terms of the rep ranges being used, and some elements of weekly undulating periodization, where training might change a little bit week to week. And finally, some elements of linear periodization, where as you get closer and closer to a competition, as you progress throughout that macro cycle, weights generally get heavier and more specific to your competition performance and reps generally go down. Anyways, that's the video for my strength athletes out there. If you like the video, please comment, like, subscribe. If you want to see me deadlift 800 pounds, leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in that next video. Peace. Local periodization enjoyer.